So good evening and welcome to Real Talk, where we talk about real topics, real issues, and we offer real solutions. We are here every Sunday night at 6 p.m. Pacific Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Tonight, we have a guest that I'm really excited to bring to you because I've known Erin for several years now and I've watched her go from being a nanny who was really interested in being newborn care to being at the top of her field for what she does. And Erin is now a master newborn care specialist through um, Newborn Care Solutions. And she is the owner of Gentle Giraffes Newborn Care. And in the feed, you will see Erin's bio. You can also find information about her company at gentlegiraffes.com. She serves the um, greater kind of Boston and Massachusetts area um, in terms of her people live. I know she also offers lots of like virtual support and options to people. And I'll let Erin tell you a little bit about herself, plus her full bio and her website will be in the link. Um, tonight, we're going to talk about routines, routines and why they matter, why they're important, who they benefit. Um, some families are really, really hardcore into routines. Some people are a little bit less. Some people don't do any routines at all. We're going to talk a little bit around this topic with Erin and kind of have her share some insights on why it might be a really good option for you as a family or a caregiver to look at. So Erin, welcome to Real Talk tonight. We're glad to have you. Oh, thank you so much, Tanya. I'm glad to be here. Um, as Tanya said, I'm Erin Manning and I own Gentle Giraffes. Um, and I um, am a master newborn care specialist and I absolutely love what I do. Um, and I started my company because I felt that in our uh, section of uh, the country, we needed um, an agency or a full-blown agency that, um, really brings quality care and education to families who really deserve it. And that's what we go on. Um, and as you know, Tanya said, we're gonna to speak tonight a little bit about routines and why um, they are beneficial, especially from newborns all the way straight through to adults and, and how they benefit um, starting small to, to older kids. But first, let's just um, talk a little bit about um, what is a routine. A routine is actually, they are a sequence of activities that you do over and over. Um, they become habits or predictable habits or, or things in order um, or rituals. The difference also though, that's between ritual, I mean, I'm sorry, um, routines and, and scheduling is that routines again, are things that you just, activities that you do over and over again, whereas scheduling, you actually schedule it. Like for instance, tonight, Tanya and I scheduled this. It was nine o'clock on Sunday night, and that's a schedule. Whereas you have other things where I go to work um, at night. I do 9 p.m. to um, 6 a.m. typically, and we schedule the days that we're gonna be on. Um, whereas routines could also be um, what we do with babies or what we do as adults. In the morning, for instance, most people get up they brush their teeth, they take a shower, they make their coffee, and they get ready for the day. When we deal with newborns, a lot of times, especially at night, what we're teaching them are happy and healthy uh, rituals and routines based on their basic biological needs of sleep and eating. And that is not scheduled, but it's based on what they need. And we teach them kind of in a three-hour segment of, of that to be able to get their needs met. And the longer that we do those routines of typically eat, play, sleep, they um, body start to learn that this is what they're getting and they're getting the proper amount of sleep, the proper amount of, of, of food, that they know that they're um, gonna get those. They don't have to start to, um, their body doesn't have to start to hunt for it. They don't have to, to naturally try to, to get their, their needs met. They're just met already for them. And they are calmer, they are um, happier babies, and they become secure and stronger as, as they grow. So Erin, can I ask a question around that? Sure. Um, so if we're talking about that, if I'm hearing you right, are you essentially saying that if we follow a routine, so if I understood that right, a routine isn't set by a clock, it's more set by the needs of the baby and kind of just following a pattern, right? 
Exactly. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So neither the people. If we're doing that, if if I'm hearing you right, what you're saying is that their body kind of begins to learn and depend on that, and because they know it's coming, because it's been consistently met, and their needs are always taken care of. Maybe they aren't going to get. If I heard you right, are you saying they're not going to get quite as stressed? They're not going to start crying or fussing as much because they know it's coming. Yes, absolutely. And that's what the routines teach them too, especially when they're done consistently over and over again, they realize their body actually um, conform, maybe be the, the, not the quite the right word, but their body knows when, just like it, it knows when it is just like a lot of times um, we know we start to get hungry at a certain time because that's when we would eat. Um, our body just knows that their bodies know that, which they also in turn become, um, why can't I think of the word, but um, become calmer and safer and more secure knowing that they're, that those are, those are happening. And those are their basic biological needs that they need to have to be able to grow. So right. if they aren't getting it or they're not getting enough or there's something going on, typically a baby does cry or fuss um, right. out for those. So it, it, could that then, you know, be one of those things where if we have a fairly consistent routine with a baby as a parent or as a caregiver, if they're suddenly really upset or really fussy at a time when they normally wouldn't be, and when their needs are normally expect, uh, you know, they expect it to be met and it normally is, that maybe could be a good clue for us that maybe something else is going on. Yes, absolutely. I, I teach that to a lot of our, our clients, um, especially when we're, we're doing a lot of the um, healthy sleep habits and, and routines at night. And I teach them too that, that to learn their baby, learn what their baby's habits are and routines are when their baby sleeps. Because if they learn those, then we will also know when the baby actually really might need us to intervene. There could be something going on, like take six months down the road when they're teething, they might cry out in the middle of the night. That might be a need because that cry is different than something different, uh, something before. So they're learning that. They're learning those routines and rituals and the habits of the baby too. Fantastic. So, so essentially, if I'm hearing you right, we're saying these routines benefit not only the baby, but it actually can benefit the parent or the caregiver as well in terms of being able to read and understand their baby and then meet their needs much more quickly and more accurately? Is that is that a fair statement? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I talk about um, how um, having these, these needs met or doing the routines or rituals with the babies, when we do that and they know that they're getting that and they're calmer, when they do start to kind of, um, something is a little bit off, they're almost like a fish out of water because they're like, they're they're kind of freaking out like a fish does when they're not in water and right. that right then and there is going to tell you that something is 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 um off and that will clue the parent and the or the caregiver into oh my goodness we need to figure out something else otherwise the baby would be calm when you go to give them the bottle or calm when they're changing them or or um they're happier or they know when they're going to sleep because you you shut the lights off, you change their diaper, you put them in their crib, those kind of things too. So they learn that that's what's happening. Fantastic. So there are there any other reasons why routines are important for babies or for families or for caregivers? Well, especially if you have a um, house that has um, multiple caregivers for the family or for the baby, it's really good to have these routines um, established so that everybody's on the same page. Because if I do something different and you do something different, or you know the mom does something different, then the baby again is like a fish out of water because we're all doing something different and it never knows what's going to happen. So they're they're not feeling safe and secure because they don't know when their basic needs are going to get met. Mm -hmm. um, it also helps them as they grow because they become confident, they become secure in themselves, they can learn better. They're more behaved usually as they get onto toddlers. Um, they have a better sense of uh, well-being or what I like to call a stronger inner container because they're emotionally able to develop at an at appropriate um, stage. They, um, their um, cognitiveness 
is, is growing so that they can learn how to do things that are in order or um, do chores or you know whatever the routine might possibly be. But the most thing I like to believe is that emotionally, cognitively, their container on the inside is what I call it, is solid because they trust themselves more as they get older, which in turn, in general, they're gonna trust uh, people around them. And they're just gonna be solid, more well, um, happy and well-rounded um, little kids and as adults as they get older. Right. So um, does a routine have any kind of impact on sleep at all? Yes, absolutely. Um, it's huge. A um, couple of things too, knowing, knowing just how long a baby um, biologically or developmentally can stay awake is really big to know um, when you should put them down for sleep. Um, Sleep is just huge for all of us in general. It helps our body um, stay calmer. It helps us grow. It also helps us process everything that we're learning throughout the day. Um, but having those routines for sleep, like I said earlier, swaddling them, um, putting them in, in their crib awake but, uh, but sleepy, um, changing their diaper, those are all routines. And they're learning all of those things so that they can anticipate what is happening. And again, another one of their biological needs is being met. Mm -hmm. Okay, so does that have like any impact on, you know, you mentioned the morning. So you said, you know, we get up, we brush our teeth, we take a shower, whatever. So does that having like a routine, like swaddling and putting them in the crib, whatever, yeah. does that impact their sleep at night too? Oh, absolutely. Especially during the, uh, during the night, if you don't have a solid um, routine during the day so that the baby's needs are getting met during the day, the baby's going to wake up in the middle of the night needing some of those needs to be met. Or if they're not getting enough sleep during the day, they'll tend to wake up either earlier in the morning or more frequently at night, because again, their needs weren't met during their day. So their body is becoming overtired and starting to turn and their inside is is kind of freaking out for lack of a better explanation so that their their internal body doesn't know what to do. So again, they don't feel secure and they're kind of like a fish out of water and all the different stuff is happening with them. And um, we won't know what their needs might need or what they need because there's no, there's no consistency with that. Right. So when is a good time for a parent or a caregiver to really start looking at, hey, maybe it's time for me to start implementing a routine. Kind of how does that work in those first few weeks with newborns? And then, you know, well, I have, I have a couple of questions about older kids too, but like with newborns and small babies, how does that work? When should you start that kind of stuff? So I recommend um, my clients start literally from day one to implement um, some of the routines. Not a lot, because as you know, especially the first two weeks, we want to establish the breastfeeding feeding supply if that's the route that they go. Um, but I do have routines for that. I tell them between a certain time in the morning and a certain time at night to feed every two, two and a half hours so that they're getting used to eating uh, more frequently during the day, but also um, put them down the same way that you're going to put them down from day one as you want to be able to put them down three years from now. So if you want to rock your baby to sleep, do it. If that's what you want to do now, plan on that's what you're going to be doing a year, possibly two years from now. It's also developing their neuro pathways to do something a certain way. And then we never have to um, go back and change it if we do do it in a um, healthy and a productive way. Mm -hmm. okay. Can I say anything like with um, parents who don't fully believe in in strict uh, routines, no matter what they're doing, they are doing some sort of routine and they are developing the baby a certain way. Okay, that makes sense that, you know, even if they're not following, you know, some people follow really rigid schedules. I personally am not a fan of that, um, but I'm also not living in their life and it's not my role to make a decision for, their, for another family about what's right for them. Um, but, so you're saying essentially even families who don't seem to have any kind of routine at all, that kind of more go with the flow, there is actually a, some kind of an underlying routine that they're teaching? Yes. Yeah, they're teaching uh, more of a very loose and kind of go with the flow routine. 
mm -hmm. whatever that could possibly be. I'm more of, I like a, a more rigid routine that mm -hmm. works for me. Um, but there are people out there that like to, to have um, more go with the flow with whatever could possibly be. They don't get up every morning at the same time and brush their teeth. They might get up and have their coffee or they might, you know, decide that they want to take their newborn out for, you know, a stroll one day here, but then have the baby sleep at grandma's house another day here. That's fine. But they're establishing a routine that the baby is sleeping in different places. Uh -huh. So essentially, it's not so much whether you're strict or whether you're more go with the flow. It's just the fact that babies start to learn what is normal and that becomes their routine. Yep. Okay, cool. So when should those, if, if you said with a family with a newborn, starting it on day one, start as you mean to go is the phrase that came to mind when you said that. Um, how about if, say a family's got a six month old or they've got a nine month old and they're like, wow, we've kind of been all over the place, but I, I just got this great job offer and I'm gonna go back to work and now my child has to get up and go to daycare or they have a nanny coming over or whatever, or they gotta go to grandma's or you know, whatever that is. Now we need to be on more of a routine. When should they establish that or how should that work? Um, I, they should establish that as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, the, the earlier you can do it, the better um, and faster that the baby will will unlearn the old routine and relearn this routine. Um, however, it may take a few days and you might have some, uh, the baby might show some signs of um, uncomfortableness because sometimes changing our routines or our habits can be uncomfortable for us as well. Um, but doesn't mean to stop it, it just means that they have to relearn something new. And a lot of times that takes a little bit of a push. Right. So might it be wise then if somebody was doing that, say they needed to implement that change. Okay, I have to start my new job in, in 10 days. So start, you say start the routine right away and that they could expect that if the child's a little bit older, there might be a little bit of disruption. Yeah. Yeah. So would it be really important to kind of step in and comfort them and meet their needs during that time? Or is it better to just be, rigid and hey you know tough you got to learn this that's the way there's, there's several ways that families like to do things there are the families that like to take things a little bit more on the slower scale and in a more of a gentle pro, uh, approach then there are some people who just want to kind of rip the band-aid off and and go and do it then i personally think um when it comes to babies that young the more um the slower approach actually is better for their developmental growth now I'm transitioning in one of my, my um, with one of my clients, I'm transitioning out of it and I'm going to help the new nanny come in. I've been there basically for the past year, been doing almost 24 sevens for them for the past year. So when I was speaking to the new person that's coming in, we both agreed that if we had longer, and then this person is extremely um, um, confident and, and educated and experienced, I mean, way beyond I am. So I have no, no qualms about her, her being able to do this. I could just leave the first day, she'd be fine. But we both agreed for the baby's sake, it's better that she be there and we kind of take it on the slow approach than just rip the Band-Aid off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm more of a fan of that in whenever possible also. Um, but I love the fact that you acknowledge that different families kind of have different styles and are going to have different approaches to how they do this. Um, what would you advise if somebody is a caregiver and they're working with a family that's making that, how much should the caregiver be involved? Like with what you're dealing with right now, you know, how, how much should they be a part of it? How much should the parents handle it? Is there any real solid direct answer or is it kind of all over the map depending on the family like other things? Whoever is going to be taking care of that baby should be involved. Mm -hmm. um, and they all should learn how to do it the same exact way, relatively the same exact way. We all kind of do things a little differently, but 
um, as much as possible so that the baby, again, feels safe and secure and knows what to expect and that everybody across the board is doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what I'm, I'm feeling like I'm hearing through this whole thing, whether they're a newborn or whether they're older, is that when there is that consistent routine, whether it's rigid or whether it's go with the flow, no, you know, no matter what that family style is, the consistency in the routine is kind of the key component. Am I hearing that right? Yes, yes. The consistency in, in the routine is definitely the key component um, yeah. for the child. Uh, they have this entire world that they're learning and they're being bombarded with everything at them and, and they don't know so they need to make sure that the caregivers or the people that are constantly in their life are giving them that solid guidance and that are there for them. And that's where the consistent routines come in to be able to help guide that child to, to grow as um, healthily and, and, and properly as possible. Great. Uh, so if you could take one piece of advice, and I'm going to ask this kind of in three parts. One piece of advice for a newborn care specialist or doula working with a family about routines, what would you give them as one big takeaway? What would I would, um, my biggest give, giveaway or takeaway would have them talk with the parents and find out what the parents, um, what the parents value. Do they value a, a, a more rigid routine or are they more relaxed and they want you know, um, a more relaxed routine? Like what, what kind of a lifestyle do they live and what is important for them so that they can go in and implement that from day one for the baby, but also educate the parents on um, what the baby needs to, their basic needs as well, knowing how um, scientifically and developmentally, how they learn and grow and what they can, they can handle um, to still be calm and feel secure and safe as well. Okay. So taking that same question, what kind of one big takeaway would you give to a nanny in this situation? If they're coming into a family that's new and they don't really know what the routine is, or it's a child they're not used to, what would be one big takeaway you would give them? To so stand back and learn. Learn um, what is going on and watch the family. Um, ask questions about what they're doing. Um, see if they can either talk to the daycare if the child is coming off of daycare or if they had another caregiver, be it a grandparent or a relative or a nanny, ask them if they could talk about that. But take things slow, especially for a toddler or a preschooler because um, they, they really need that. They really need that for the trust value mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and developing that too. Don't just come in like, you know, a bulldozer and be like, I'm going to change everything and do it my way. You know what? I totally agree with you. I had, I had that conversation just recently with a nanny and she had only been on the job a couple of days and it was a child coming out of daycare into the first time she'd ever had a nanny. And the nanny was like, I used to work in a daycare. This child isn't on any kind of a routine. The parents are this, the parents are that. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa wait a minute, you've only been there two days. Take a step back. Let that child have some time to learn that you are a trustworthy human being before you start worrying about being so rigid about schedules and implementing things. This poor little child is overwhelmed with massive amounts of changes going on in their lives. Yep. Give them an opportunity to trust you before you start changing everything up on them. Yep. And you know, it'll, it'll get better in time because she was feeling really frustrated. Like the, like the parents thought she was failing. And I just said, look, I know your heart is in the right place and your intentions are good, but you're trying too hard, too much, too fast. And yeah. so hopefully that makes a difference for her. Um, I so also same, wanna, same, oh, go ahead. Go I, ahead. Just, I just want to um, touch on, um, you know, you mentioned about, um, um, I might've just lost it now, but what uh, popped in my mind is, is that I have been in many homes um, coming in after, you know, maybe working with the second child and they didn't have anybody for their first child. 
um, you know, or it's just a different, uh, they, they did things differently for their first. And I can tell you what I have seen firsthand that one child who has more loose routines um, and compared to a child who has more consistent or stronger routines, I've had families comment more than once that the child that I have worked with that has more consistent routines and that their needs are being met at a, an appropriate time is, is happier and calmer and they know what the, the baby needs compared to their other child where um, they're just, they're just, they're not the, not that they're not happy, but some of their behavior kind of comes out in a, in a different way to be able to get their needs met. And some people will, will look at that as a problem child or the child being difficult, but it's just really that they're just trying to tell you that this is what they need and in a, in a way that they have been used to doing it, which is different than doing something a little bit more on the um, rigid side. Right. That makes total sense. Completely. Um, so same question. What tip or what thing, what one thing, if you could only take one thing to share with parents about routines and children, what would you want their key takeaway to be? I personally would say that um, starting them from day one mm -hmm. and find something that works for, for your family. Mm -hmm. um, I tend to get a lot of the families that are that are dual working households and they like more of a, of a um, defined routine that has a little bit more structure to it, um, which is great for me because that works for me too. Um, but find, find what works for them. And as the NCS or the postpartum doula or even the nanny coming in, find how you can support whatever that family needs. Um, based on your education and your experience and what you can bring to them. Um, also making sure that it's still a calm and happy household. Right, absolutely. So anything else that you would want our viewers to know about routines, kind of why they're important, why they matter, any other key points that you wanted to share with us tonight? Well, routines actually really help um, emotionally and cognitively grow the child or the babies into a full, you know, capable adult. Um, they can really help with learning how to plan things. They can really emotionally how to respond to different, um, uh, anything that's kind of being thrown at them as well. Um, they seem to be calmer. They seem to kind of have, have their life put together a little bit more, it seems like, when there are routines that have been set forth from, from the beginning and they're solid ones. But also remember too that routines are gonna change as, as the child grows or as the family changes and the dynamics change too. So don't be so um, focused on it has to be this way. Right. Be focused on how these routines are going to um, benefit the child to grow and learn and um, be a healthy, healthy child, emotionally, cognitively, physically, as they go, as they grow. Mm -hmm. No, this is great. Um, I really appreciate your tips. Um, we're gonna probably have a lot of questions from people. Um, so we'd love it if you can stick around for a while and ask questions or answer those questions as they come up in the feed. Um, for those of you who are watching with us tonight, Please type your questions in the feed for Erin. I know that she would be thrilled to share answers and expertise with you. Um, and even if it's after the fact and you watch this on replay, tag Erin or tag Newborn Care Solutions and we'll make sure that Erin knows that there's more questions for her. Um, if you're a parent who's interested in her services, her website will be in the feed, but it's gentlegiraffes.com. Erin, we really are thrilled to have had you here tonight. We really appreciate you sharing with us. So I wanted to say thank you. Well, thank you so much for having me, Tanya. I love having uh, chatting with you all the time. Yeah, absolutely. We really appreciate it. So thank you for joining us tonight on Real Talk, where every Sunday night we are on and we talk about real issues, real topics, and real solutions at 6 p.m. Pacific time, 9 p.m. Eastern time. 
here on Facebook and starting this week, if everything goes right in the tech department, we will also be live on Instagram on Sunday nights. So now you'll be able to find us both places. So thanks a lot. Have a great evening and thanks for joining us.